Hello. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, so today we will be discussing week four. Let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, ma'am. So, in week 4, we will look into abstract classes, interfaces, then uh, we have a private classes as well, then callbacks, operators. Sorry to interrupt you, ma'am, but mm -hmm. your voice is not clear. Yes, ma'am. Some surrounding voice is coming. Mm -hmm. Electronic sound. Ah, uh, just a minute. Hello, is this fine? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, let's start. So in week four, we have abstract classes, interfaces, then we look into private classes, right? Then uh, callbacks and iterators. So let's start with abstract classes. So here we know we can use the class hierarchy to group together related classes, okay? So let's see, suppose there, there are classes like circle, then shape, uh, square, and rectangle. Okay. So these are all shapes. So let's create a class shape so that circle, square, and rectangle can have the properties of shape. So suppose... Here I have a class shape so suppose we have a class shape and in class shape we have this public double parameter method okay So what I want to do is this circle, rectangle and square classes extend this shape and also define this method. Okay, so suppose I have not defined this method yet here and I want those classes to define this method. So what we can do is these public suppose public parameter class public parameter method is having a definition here as well let's go like this suppose this is having definition here as well and it is returning some absurd value okay but i want that these subclasses like class circle then class square and class rectangle these also define the same method but now it uh, uh, we will be relying on subclasses to redefine this function what if what if this doesn't happen so to address this concern of relying on programmer discipline to override the parameter method in subclasses you can make the parameter method itself abstract okay so let's make this as abstract in shape class so this ensures that every subclass must provide its 
own implementation of the parameter method. So what I am doing here is I am making this as abstract. Okay, so I will be writing this as abstract. Then double. This is the what? This is the return type, right? This is the return type here, and this is the method name. This is the access modifier. And the keyword I am using here is abstract. Okay, so by declaring the me perimeter method as abstract and shape class, you are enforcing that every subclass provides its own implementation of this method. So if I am making this as an abstract class, this won't be having the definition here. Okay. Now, the every subclass will be having its own implementation of this method. And if a subclass fails to do so, compiler will generate an error preventing creation of instances of that subclass. Right? So, this way you achieve the goal of ensuring every shape subclass defines parameter method without relying on programmer discipline. So, shape class should indeed be declared as abstract to include an abstract method right so this class will be abstract so this will be what public abstract class shape right is this clear how we are doing this hello yes ma'am clear yes. Ma'am, right? Ma'am, you are. Uh, yes, ma'am, you are. Can you go ma again? Ma'am, can we can we define in this also abstract mm -hmm. class? If we want to define something in public abstract uh, the class per double parameter, can we define some method over here also? Uh, where in abstract yeah, class? In abstract class, you can either have the abstract methods or uh, the concrete methods. Okay. okay, so concrete method is something which is not having the abstract keyword. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so if I am not mentioning this as abstract, then I can have the definition here like the normal method. Also, you don't need if a class circle is extending this shape class here, they don't need to have the uh, implementation of this parameter method if it is not abstract. Yeah, okay, okay. <clears throat> but if it is if it is an abstract method, the circle circle class should have the implementation of parameter method. Okay, okay. okay. and one thing, uh, if you are including some abstract method in a class, the class should also be an abstract. Okay. But uh, it is not necessary that if the class is abstract, then all the methods in the uh, class should be abstract only. They can, they yes, have... that is not necessary. In abstract class, see, in abstract class, you can have the normal methods and the abstract methods. That is a possibility. But if you are mentioning any method as an abstract method, any method as an abstract method, then it should be within abstract class okay and uh, uh, this abstract uh, class can contain all normal methods also it's not necessary that at least one method should be abstract yeah that is not the possibility it can have all normal methods it can have all abstract methods it can have the mix of normal and abstract okay Any other doubt? Is this clear how we are doing abstract implementation? Yes, ma'am. If any one of the method is abstract, then the class must be abstract, right? Yes. Okay. So, see, if I am extending shape class here in all of these classes, Right now, these are the subclasses of abstract class. 
circle, square, and rectangle are the subclasses of this shape class, right? So why am why am I doing this? Because I don't want the imp the uh, what perimeter method to be defined in every classes individually, right? So I can have the uh, declaration here. And I can implement it as the definition in these subclasses, right? So what happens in a Java abstract class cannot be instantiated on its own. Okay, so abstract classes cannot be instantiated on its own and is meant to be subclassed by other classes can contain abstract methods, concrete methods, instance variables, and can also have instructors. So abstract class can have instance variables like in normal classes. It can have constructors. And you can mention the concrete method. Concrete methods are nothing but the normal methods and also the abstract methods. Okay, so for instantiation, you cannot create an instance of an abstract class directly. You can only create an instance of a concrete subclass and use it. So what I can do here is I create object of this uh, shape class. Suppose S1 is the object referring to the shape, shape class. And then if I call here the shape instructor like this this will give you an error okay so this will give you an error because abstract class cannot be instantiated by its own you need to instantiate the object s1 like this okay so this is what this is the subclass of what shape class right now if i call the parameter method or any other method, then it will be accessible. Similarly, if the uh, like square class is also extending shape class, I can mention it like this and then I can call the parameter method. Okay, is this clear how we are doing this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, if we cannot have an instance of shape, then how come we have instance variables, ma'am? If you don't have instance of shape, then see if we are mentioning some uh, abs in abstract class, and if you are mentioning some as abstract method, then what it you should be having the subclasses, right, to yes. implement those methods. If you are not having the what if you're not having the abstract method here, then you will be having some concrete method or the normal method. So the methods could be default or it could be static. Right. So what happens? You can uh, static method, you know, static method. You just need to mention the cl class name shape and you can call the parameter method right but if you are having some default method so in default method you can directly uh, create the object of the class and uh, call the method okay that is the possibility in interface uh, That is a possibility in interface, I think. Okay, I will check out for the abstract class as well if it is possible or not. Okay. Okay, we'll see about this default and static methods when I will be discussing uh, interface. Give me a minute. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you show that slide for a minute? Give me a minute. 
sorry hello yeah can you show me that slide for a minute whatever that slide huh? yeah mm -hmm. hello are you asking something no no i just wanted to see the side i just wanted to note this down okay okay so uh, see in default function works in the interface so if i am having some default method in interface it will be having default implementation for like uh, yeah you can call it uh, using the object name in interface so i think it is also possible in abstract class as well okay i will uh, consider this and uh, we'll get back to you okay but as far as uh, this abstract class cannot be instantiated and you need to create the the subclass see if we don't mention any kind of uh, abstract method in abstract class then what is the use of uh, making the class as abstract that is also the question right no uh, it could be a, a question in the exam uh, this quiz no so that is mm -hmm. by us. whether okay. this is valid or mm -hmm. not whether this is valid or not so it could be asked whether this code is valid or not whether it will generate an error or something like that. okay i think default and static are possibilities in the interface yes, so yes. this is part of the interface so no, i was asking whether you could uh, if you cannot uh, make a instance of abstract class, what is the use of instance variables? That's what I was asking. Okay, instance variables. Yes, uh, that was what I was asking. If you can't make an instance of mm -hmm. abstract class, what is the use of instance variables? Okay, instance variables. Uh, see, uh, for instance variables, you could have the methods right you could have the methods where you can change the values there so we will see some example how to use the instance variables in abstract class okay 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 so i hope this is clear so an abstract method in a parent class forces each subclass to implement it in a sensible manner so any class with an abstract method is itself abstract it cannot create objects corresponding to an abstract class. However, we can define variables whose type is an abstract class, right? So here abstract classes can also describe capabilities allowing for generic functions. Now, if you see about the interface, so interface is what? So in class, uh, in Java, what happens? Class can only extend one class, right? but it cannot implement multi but it can implement multiple interfaces but it cannot in, uh, extend multiple classes right so if i'm having uh, some class x okay then there is a class y and suppose there is a class z so this can extend class x but if i also say that I want to extend Y as well. So this is not possible, right? But it could be possible if you are using interface. If you are using the interface, it could be possible. So suppose, let's say, define an, let's define one interface comparable. Public interface comparable. And here, let's say there is a method abstract int cmp comparable s. Okay. Then you have your circle class that implements this interface. So suppose I have public class circle that extends shape 
and implements comparable here. Okay, so this is possible. You are extending one class and then you are implementing the other interface, right? So for interface, you use the uh, keyword implements, right? And for class, you use keyword extends. Now, since you are extending shape, which is an abstract class and it is also having the abstract method. So you will be having the perimeter here. Parameter method will be there and also the CMP method which you have mentioned in interface. Okay, so also the argument will be passed whatever there is it. So one thing to, to keep in mind is interface will be having abstract method. Okay. So even if you don't mention the abstract keyword, the any method will be interpreted as abstract only. Okay. So if even if you are if you are writing the abstract keyword, then it is understood by the compiler that it is an abstract method. But even if you don't mention this, it will be interpreted as an abstract method. So interface will always have abstract method. Okay, so now here the circle class implements comparable interface. Okay, we'll see other function as well. Is this clear till now? Interface? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Okay. Now see the circle class implements comparable interface. So we can use some, suppose there is a class called public class sort functions okay so this class is to sort an array of circle objects based on the cmp method defined in the interface so what i am doing here is i am creating one method here static method quick short and i am passing the array of what comparable type okay now sort functions class includes quick sort method that works with arrays of objects implementing comparable interface so to use this definition of quick sort what we can do we can make one my class let's implement comparable And here you can have one instance variable as size. Okay. Now what I can do, I can mention since I am implementing the interface here, I have to implement uh, the method, right? The abstract method. So abstract method there was CMP. And I have to pass the object of type comparable here now here i can check whether s is the instance of instance of my class if it is i can call what i am doing here is i am type casting this and calling the size method so, uh, sorry uh, accessing the size variable here instance variable Okay, so what you have done is you are implementing the comparable interface here which is having the CMP method which is uh, what abstract and now what you are doing is you are creating an instance variable size then you have to implement the interface method abstract method since you are passing here you have already mentioned that it should pa pass the param uh, parameter s object of type 
comparable right now here what i am doing is i am just checking whether s is the instance of my class if it is then i am i can access the size here what i am doing is i am just type casting the uh, s object to my class okay so interface is an abstract class with no concrete component so in abstract method you can have the concrete methods but here all the methods will be abstract so it will not be having any concrete components and class to extend only one parent class but it can implement any number of interfaces right so interface is as a purely abstract class so it, uh, it is what it is an purely abstract class right so it cannot be instantiated on its own which we have already seen in abstract classes that it cannot be instantiated on its own so that is the same thing with interface and all of its methods are abstract by default so in interface methods are implicitly abstract they are methods which are implicitly abstract you don't need to explicitly mention the abstract keyword even if you are doing it then it is a abstract method even if you are not doing it then also the compiler will understand this is a abstract method so class in java can implement one or more interfaces that is also we have seen the class any uh, sub classes can implement one or more interface right so when a class implements an interface it must provide concrete code for each abstract method declared in the interface so classes can implement multiple interfaces here so interfaces use abstract methods preventing contradicting inheritance issues so if a class implements multiple inter interfaces with the same abstract method there is no conflict okay so java later what it allowed concrete function functions to be added to interfaces so there could be static function that i have discussed previously there could be static function so if you are having the static function let's say in interface comparable if i am having this uh, static method something like this so cmp doc method is what the static method here and it uh, what it provides the documentation string okay this is the type now cannot access instance variables and invoke directly or using interface name so i can call it like this then you have the default function so default function will have suppose a default uh, method will be in the comparable interface so here you are having default int cmp method which will be like the normal method you are having so cmp method is a default method providing a default implementation for the comparison operation so class can override these so you can invoke like a normal method using object name so suppose i want to compare this array a the ith element with the jth element so i can write it like this so with this interface you can implement comparable interface in other classes and choose whether to override cmp method accordingly to specific needs right so, so here what we are doing is we are having this my class which is implementing the comparable so now what i can do is i can make object of my class
okay so suppose there are two objects obj1 and obj2 so let's say in uh, result i want the comparison between these two objects so i can call it like this okay is this un understandable hello ma'am a bit confusing okay see uh the simple thing is interface is interface is nothing but having the properties of the abstract class okay so interface will be having only and only abstract method even if you are not writing the abstract keyword then also it will be having the abstract method okay and the second thing that i mentioned is you can implement more than one interface in the subclasses right here i can also mention any other interface like this suppose there is an interface x so i can write comparable comma x but you can only extend only one class you cannot extend more than one class in one subclass okay that is uh that will give you an error if you do that so here what i am doing is i am taking this my class which is implementing the comparable interface having the instance variable size okay so since i am implementing this comparable i need to mention the implementation of cmp method okay So now what i am doing is i am using the instance of keyword so this will check whether s is the type of my class so see here if i am creating this obj1 and obj2 object i have created so if i am calling obj1 dot cmp obj2 now this will what this will pass on here obj2 comparable s so s will convert converted to obj2 right now s is instance of my class obj2 is instance of my class this is true right now what i am doing is i am just doing a normal type casting here okay then i am accessing the size variable of this my class next what i have mentioned the static function so in static functions if you have mentioned the inter in interface this is uh this is what uh, added in java in the later uh, years that you can have the static function and also the default function in uh, interface so if you have mentioned anything as a static function static method then you can directly you know uh, in if we have any static method we can directly uh, invoke any invoke that method by using the name of the class right right this all you know right hello hello yes ma'am okay uh, i assume that you all know what static method does right so if if i am having this static keyword in this cmp doc method then i can directly call this cmp doc by using the class name which is comparable or the interface name right then yes. you can also have the default function so default function if you mention it as default default keyword if you have mentioned then you can normally create the object of this interface and you can call the uh like uh, any other method you have mentioned here so that is the thing i have done here this cmp method here is and it, it is calling by passing the object to understood yes ma'am
Any doubt, anyone? Do I need to repeat this again? So, ma'am, one suggestion uh, is uh, while you are writing, if you can use VS Code or some kind of, you know, typing, then the letters and indentation will be clear. It will help uh, understanding. I don't know. This is just my personal view. We can take opinion of other students. Yeah, we can do that. But uh, since the time constraints are there, so if I uh, add the programming part also, then I don't think it will get uh, completed. The concepts will no, get no, no. completed. By. But OK, uh, if you all want it like that, then uh, in the later weeks, I will add the programming part as well. You cannot create instances of interfaces, no? Can you create? Because it's said also abstract class, no? So yes, you cannot instantiate uh, this interface. Interface, also. yes, you cannot. So similar like we have done here in abstract classes, uh, it should be instantiated using the subclasses. Can we have instance variables in the interface? Yes, you can have the instance variable interface. Okay, so interface uh, is an abstract class with no concrete components and a class extend to only one parent class, but it can implement any number of interfaces. So he, he, here we have seen the things interface is a purely abstract class all methods are abstract class implements an interface provides concrete code for each abstract function classes can implement multiple interfaces so no contradictory inheritance right next we have seen about the static default functions now let's see about dealing with conflicts okay suppose here I have this class person and it is having uh, the get name method and suppose it returns the string no name. Next I have this public interface designation and it is also having the public default string get name and it will be returning you no designation as string okay then what I am doing is I am taking one class employee and let's say I want to extend person and implement designation. So this scenario involves potential conflicts, right? So employee inherits from class person. So from person class it is inheriting the get name method and also from the interface it needs to implement this okay so this is the default you don't need to implement but it is having the string uh, return type get name method so in such cases class win rule applied okay so in this case, the method inherited from the per class person wins and the default method from the interfaces is ignored. So the method is motivated reverse cap compatibility to ensure that existing code such as classes that already have a get name method is not affected when new interfaces with default methods are introduced. Right. So if you want to use default method from the interface, you need to explicitly override it in employee class. So here 
I have here I have public class employee which is extending person and implementing designation. So here if I am mentioning get name method, then this is going to this is going to be what using this get name method of class person but i also want to access the get name method of interface so what i can do is i can return designation dot super dot get name method okay now since i have written this designation dot super dot get name so this is going to call the get name method of interface designation clear how we are resolving the conflict hello super will go to the super will go to the uh class no not the interface it will go to person class no madam super super now since we have already mentioned designation right designation okay. dot super so this will give you the get name method of designation class okay okay and this get name method in designation is default method get name method yes this is a default method so this is default method that is why i am able to call it by using this designation uh, interface right if it is wasn't a default method then it won't be possible it will be abstract method if and if you don't mention the abstract keyword Okay, so uh, see special class means rule for conflict between super class and interfaces. Now let's see about the private classes. Till now, it is it clear? Any doubt? Interface and abstract classes. Have you all gone through the week four content? I'm up to lecture four. Okay. Okay, let's see about private classes. So an object can have nested objects as instance variables. So an instance variable can be a user defined type right see suppose i'm having suppose i'm having a class employee then it is having instance variable name salary and date join date okay and there is a class date there is a class date which is having instance variable day month year 
okay so date is a public class available to other classes now let's what uh, make some private class this date as a private class and it will add additional degree of data encapsulation so in public class employee i am mentioning this date class as private okay so here i am mentioning private class date and here i will be having the instance variable whatever it is okay so see previously we have seen why we are making the instance variables as private because we want data encapsulation right now what we are doing we are creating class as private for what for adding the additional degree of data encapsulation so this will be called as inner class inner class right one more example here you have this linked list class okay this linked list class is having size as the instance variable then you are having this first class first which is of type node then you are having this head object insert of uh, head uh, method insert method now what you are seeing is you are having this private class node right now this is called as outer class and this will be inner class okay so private class node is nested inside the linked list class making it a private inner class now it is having two public instance variables data and next so by using private inner class node details of the linked list node structure are hidden from the external classes correct since you are making this as a private it cannot be accessible by uh, the class other than linked list class right so this encapsulation helps to manage the complexity of the implementation and allows the outer class linked list to control access to its internal state now linked list class is having the control on its internal state right linked list class will decide which uh, things you, uh, it uh, this linked list class wants to be accessible by the other classes and it can also con having the control over what the th what are the things that shouldn't be uh, accessible by the other classes correct so here uh, in some situations the structure of these nested objects need not be exposed private classes allow an additional degree of data encapsulation combine private classes with interfaces to provide control access to the state of an object so interfaces can be used in combination with private classes to provide the control access to the state of an object so integrating interfaces might involve defining and implementing interfaces for certain functionalities which can be implemented by the linked list class or other classes that interact with it okay so we'll see how this uh, control interaction with objects happen is this clear how private classes are defining in inside the public classes yeah yes ma'am so the idea here is not to kind of expose uh, the structure of the inner class so you protect it and you um, provide methods or interfaces to get control access right so like i think we have studied in pdsa the linked list will contain all the nodes so 
you only get the first pointer and uh, what it uh, like points to next 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 that's not known you have to go through the method uh, while you are traversing you have to go through the next method i think uh, it was explained but in a, you know in python we did it yeah see this node will be having the structure like this node this is the data and this is the next point pointed next. to the next node basically yeah, yeah. So here we are creating the first object for the node. Right. So first will be an instance variable which is of type node. So it will be pointing this. Okay. Now you are having the object head, the method. Then you are having the insert method. So insert insert thing will be happen. You are inserting something here. Then you will be assigning first the next right first will hold the next value then it will be pointing to the other node here correct yes ma'am so this is the structure of linked list so what we are doing here is we are uh, just uh, making this node class as private because we don't want the data and the whatever we are storing in the next shouldn't be accessible to the other class okay got it okay any other doubt okay now see control interaction with objects so here we have this railway booking class which is demonstrating an example of combining private classes with interfaces to provide control access to an object so let's break down the structure and see how it achieves controlled access right here you are having this public interface qif here you are having public interface qif this declares a single method get status. So uh, this is also what abstract method here. Now public class railway booking is what outer class. And this represents a railway booking system and has a private instance variable railway db of what of type booking db okay so it is also having the public method qif login it will be checking for valid login credential and if the login is valid it creates instance of private inner class query object and it will return it okay so what what this login method is doing it is just uh, checking whether you have the login credentials or not. So see here you are passing the you. What is you? The username and the password. Now query q obj is of type query object. Here you have the method valid login. Which will be checking whether you have the login credential or not. If you are having the login credential then it will create an instance of query object here and it will return the qobj object okay so new keyword is used to create the uh, object right now you are having this private inner class query object right which is implementing qif so you are having this interface which is implemented by this this qif interface implemented by query object now uh, since it is having the qif interface implementation meaning it provides an implementation for the get status method declared in the interface so by using private inner class that implements qif interface railway booking class provides 
controlled access to the functionalities related to querying the status right so external interaction with this functionality is through an object of private class and the capabilities of this object are known through the public interface qif so this encapsulation helps in hiding the internal details of the query handling mechanism and exposes only the necessary functionality to the interface right since you are having this qif interface here which is having the get status method and you are implementing this within what private class now what you need to have this get status method implementation here but railway booking class is what it is it is doing it is uh, controlling its own capabilities by using the interface here right so you are exposing only the necessary functionalities to the interface so here it can provide control access to an object combine private classes with interfaces external interaction is through an object of private class capabilities of this object are known through a private public interface an object can maintain instance variables to track the state of the interaction is this clear how we are creating how we are using the interface in private class yes ma'am so here in this case uh, you know if the person or the user is trying to do railway booking which is the uh, outer class then the query object so there is also a limit so because you know to to make sure the application is available we are controlling the access so every time user does a query uh, mm -hmm. obviously the limit gets encountered so maybe 10 queries in every uh, 10 minutes or whatever so that way the information is available equally to all the users so there are certain safeguards in place which is possible by creating a structure like this right uh, so we control everything we monitor state and all that now i think it's becoming clear yes yes correct any doubt anyone do i need to explain this again okay i hope this is clear to you okay now let's see about the callbacks so callback interface suppose here we have this callback interface timer owner okay so this declares a single method timer done now this interface serves as a callback contract that any class implementing it must adhere to so it specifies the method that will be invoked when the timer is done so here class implementing what class implementing this interface callback interface timer owner so my class me uh, is implementing this timer owner meaning it provides an implementation for the timer done method so inside my class there is a method f okay that does uh, some work and then creates a timer object so here it is creating the timer object t passing itself as a timer so here inside in my class there is a method f that does some work and then creates a timer object t passing itself a timer owner so it starts the timer using the t start okay so here t dot start it is calling then the timer then method in my class is the callback method that will be invoked by timer when it is done 
see the simple thing is you are creating the interface timer owner here then you are having the abstract method timer done now you are having the my class uh, class here which is implementing timer owner now this timer owner since you are implementing timer owner timer done method should be part of it right so here we have the definition of timer done now this class is having some other separate method which is f here it is creating timer t so here we have the class timer whose object i am creating inside my class within the f method right here what i am doing is i am passing this this parameter what this object will be interpreted as this timer will call this one right timer owner so here my class will be referred as this and it will be passed on to timer owner this o object which is of type timer owner right timer owner so it is creating object o of timer owner but having the reference of my class correct now owner object which is also the type of timer owner the variable which is also the type of timer owner will be assigned with the value of o here and here you are having the start method so when i am uh, creating the t object here then i am calling what start method so this start method will call the timer start method and this will call the owner timer done owner timer done right so owner is what owner is this right my class object so now you are calling timer done method of this my class uh i'm not having the image here. okay see here what you are doing is you are having this my class and here you are having timer so within the my class you are calling the start method which is mentioned in timer right so now you are having what t dot start this will be going to call this method and once you have called the start method here it will be calling next thing it will be calling is owner dot timer done so timer done method is part of my class now owner dot timer done when you mention here it will be going to call this this is called as callbacks so callbacks are useful when we spawn a class in parallel spawn object notifies the owner when it is done so class also notify some other object when done right so owner in timer need not be the object that created the timer interfaces allow this callback to be generic owner has to have the capability to be notified is this clear you are having the interface timer owner which is having the method timer done my class is having uh, this implementing timer owner interface which is uh, which needs to uh, have the uh, implementation of this timer done method 
so here it is part of the my class okay now what now what you are having this f method which is creating the object t of timer this will refer to this object which is my class okay so this will refer to my class and here what you are doing is you are calling the start method which is part of timer now then since you are passing this here the timer constructor will get invoked and it will create the t object right so when it is invoked here in timer owner o so o is now what type of timer owner o is a variable of type timer owner similarly owner is also the type owner is also a variable of type timer owner so o owner will be assigned with the value of o which is nothing but my class okay now this since when you invoke the start method here it will call the method here in the timer class and this timer class will again call the timer done method of my class by using dot this owner variable right is this clear so here timer class implements runnable interface am i audible hello Yes, Hello. Yes, come here. Okay. So timer class here is implementing runnable interface, which is indicating the instance of this class can be executed in a separate thread. So we'll be seeing about runnable interface in thread. Okay. So timer class has a timer owner instance variable named owner. this variable is set during the creation of the timer object so we are creating the timer object and we are setting the value to the owner and that will uh, so this variable here you are setting during the creation of the timer object effectively specifying the object that will be notified when the timer is done okay so timer done method notifying the owner that the timer is done here okay so this is where the callback mechanism works so by using callback interface timer owner timer class can notify any object that implements this interface when it is done you are creating the timer owner interface here and by using this you are having the callback between this two classes any doubt any doubt anyone no no okay so i think uh, you all haven't gone through the lectures right professor lectures yet i'm assuming that is it so hello hello huh 
how many have, have you gone through the professor lectures okay only two people so this was i think uh, was released on friday right content was released on friday week 4 ma'am i have gone till like i have gone through till lecture 3 uh, but i have not gone through all the lectures yet okay uh see uh, i would suggest to you all that before coming for this uh, session please go through the content all the professor lectures right the slides that have been given to you then i think it would be uh, easy for you to understand these things okay since you all are not asking me anything so i am assuming that uh, you haven't gone through the lectures yet okay so uh, please go go through the lectures before attending this session that is uh, my recommendation for you all okay so uh, here the use of interface allows for generic callback so it is making it flexible to notify different type of object so this design allows for parallel execution okay so this allows you for parallel execution so as the timer class implements runnable and can be executed in separate thread okay so here runnable interface Uh, we are mentioning so this basically what it does it will create the separate thread okay we'll see about this in uh, the later weeks when we will be reading about thread the owner of the timer specified by timer owner interface can be any object with the capability to be notified not necessarily that created the timer okay so i hope this call back is okay so it's done so the last thing we have is iterator just give me a minute
so this is the last topic of week 4 so iterator iterator pattern provides you the way to access elements of a collection sequentially without exposing the underlying representation of the collection okay so iterator interface declares two uh, methods so we have this uh, has next method and get next method so has next checks if there is another in element in the iteration and get next will retrieve the next element in the iteration okay so this will be checking whether you have the next another element in the iteration and this will be retrieving okay so this will be retrieving the next element in the iteration so here you have this linear list class that contains private inner class iter implements iterator interface okay so iterator is nothing but a interface right See here, iterator is nothing but an interface, and it is having two different methods here: has next and get next. Now, iter class, iter class has an instance variable position of type node, position of type node to keep track of the current position in the list. So, linear list. class can obtain an iterator by calling the get iterator get iterator method here which returns a fresh iter object implementing the iter iterator interface okay now this allows to iterate one element of the linear list without exposing internal details of the list and it can use the pattern to traverse a list so the enhanced for loop in java implicitly use an iterator to iterate over elements in a collection so you will be reading about collection in the later weeks so collection is nothing but you will be having list arrays then maps so this iterator interface will be useful for traversing the elements of collection okay so here you have see iterators are another example of interaction with state each iterator needs to remember its position in the list export an object with a pre specified interface to handle the interaction so this is the following abstraction start at the beginning of the list there is a next element get the next element and whatever operations you want to perform on it okay encapsulate this functionality in an interface called iterator so we have the interface iterator so since it is an interface it will be having abstract methods right so has next is of type boolean correct because it is checking what it is checking whether you have the next element or not so it will be giving you either true or false that is why it is of type boolean next you have the get next method which is of type object why object because it will be retrieving that element okay so you are retrieving the element and since these are what these are collection classes classes right so you will be returning the object only so that is why the get next method is of type object here okay now what you are doing is we are creating an iterator object and export it so here we have this class linear list okay So this linear list class is implementing is having this private class iter 
okay iter is a private class this is the outer class then you are here you are having the inner class which is a private class iter and implementing the iterator so iterator is a predefined interface in java you don't need to define it so you are simply implementing the iterator interface now what you are doing is you are creating you are having this instance variable you are having this uh, variable position of type node then you have iter constructor here then has next and guess next method you have defined why you have to define this because the uh, it is abstract method part of the iterate part of the iterator interface but we don't need to uh, write this interface iterator uh, uh, it is already there in java we don't have to write this interface which, uh, yeah that is already there in java and uh, it has the same methods has next and get next yes yes these methods are there you just okay. need to uh, create the object of it Uh, here, what I am doing is I am just implementing the iterator here, and then I am creating the object of it. So through this object, I can call the methods of uh, this iterator. Okay, so so this is the uh, same thing like we use in for each here. The new Java for over in list implicitly construct and use an iterator so it is something like this similar thing iterator do you just need to create the object here since i am using the iter class i am creating the object iter it new iter and then i am returning whatever the object here it okay so uh, get iterator get iterator so linear class can obtain an iterator by calling the get iterator method which returns the iter object okay so it is returning the iter object implementing the iterator interface now this allows you to iterate over the elements of linear list without exposing the elements of the internal details of the list okay you can also what uh, this is used for traversing a list so the enhanced for loop in java is implicitly used in iterator to iterate over elements in the collection so see here we have for each suppose i mentioned that uh, type could be anything so and the variable x now suppose this is what this is array okay and you are going through the elements of this array list and you can perform any kind of operations on the variable operation on variable x okay so iterator is something similar to that but we will see this uh, in detail when we'll be uh, doing the coding thing for collection because it will be used uh, for traversing uh, the elements of this collection uh, objects okay any doubt so this iterator can be used to uh, traverse through a uh, array also and uh, linked list also any uh, any kind of uh, what do you say uh, uh, object which is having a lot of elements yeah it will be going through the list the arrays then uh, you have uh, i think it will not be working on uh, 
maps maps and sets for maps and sets you will be using this uh, for each so basically for list and arrays you will be using the iterator okay i will give you an example how to use this iterator just a minute Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I'm sharing my screen. See, uh, here. What it is, we are having this uh, array list. This array list is basically the collection. Okay, so this will this you will be um, reading about in generics. You will be reading this is generic function, and then the collection. Okay, just ignore this part. See, this array list is having city names. You are adding the city names here. And then what you want, you want to uh, traverse through the elements. So what you can do is iterator is basically the inbuilt uh, interface provided by the Java. Okay. So you are just simply creating the iterator object here. Then what you are doing, you are calling this iterator method by using the array list name. Okay. See, here we have this get iterator. Okay, suppose there is a method iterator part of the iterator interface, and then you are calling this using the uh, 
uh, array list name then simply what you can do is use this object and uh, call the has next met method also the get next method which we have discussed here has next and get next okay so this is how it will work and it will iterate through the elements and will simply you are printing the values here so it is printing whatever you have stored in the array list clear see you have this uh, interface iterator so iterate an iterator over a collection takes place of enumeration in java collections framework okay so iterator differs from enumeration in two ways allow the caller to remove elements from the underlying collection or method names has been uh, method names have been improved so this interface is the method of java collection framework okay so java collection framework uh, will you will be uh, uh, learning about this in later weeks so see see here you have the has next method which will return two if the iteration has more elements and it will e then you have this next method okay so this next method will return the next element in the iteration similarly you have the remove method then we have also discussed about the get next method clear how we are using iterators hello any doubt anyone please go through the professor lecture once then come back again to this session and uh, go through all the contents once again okay then i think you will be able to grasp the things if you have any doubt please ask me or you can also write it on discos i will answer you okay so okay then i think we should uh, end the session here since you all have no any, uh, not uh, have any kind of doubt so yeah yeah ma'am good evening uh ma'am if you have uh, some time then uh, if you can teach me how to read the means documentation because i do not know how to means refer the documentation because in the opp also you means allow us to refer the documentation mm -hmm. uh, but i am not able to means uh, use it properly so if you can guide means how to read it and how to use it okay 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 just a minute let me open yeah, thank this you ma'am
uh, is my screen visible uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am this is the java documentation that has been shared to you right uh, yes ma'am okay see here you have different packages okay mm -hmm. so you can uh, read about whatever packages consist the different classes right so suppose if i go through this uh, java dot lang okay so it is having these many interfaces these many classes the enums exceptions errors these are all parts of what java dot lang okay then suppose uh java dot util okay so now i have the these many interfaces in java dot util okay collection mm -hmm. uh it iterator that we have discussed the maps then you have classes as well abstract list abstract collection excuse me are we list. supposed to access it during uh, the opp exam is it available yeah yeah this is available during opp yes yes oh. okay uh, you will be provided with the link you can uh, refer to the documentation so here you have the exceptions as well so uh, if i go to let's say one of these classes madam it is not poorly visible please enlarge the screen it is not visible uh, the link visible? to this is a uh, link to this is uh, shared in the dashboard link of this i think uh, will be available in your dashboard in opp of... also sir in opp, OPP there will be link have, yeah opp you have the link in programming assignment i think it is shared right Uh, I I don't in think so. Assignment you have in this uh, documentation. Then it should be not in. Can you paste the link in the chat box? Okay, now I share. I will share the link. I think it is shared also in the course instructions. No OPP also. I don't think you are giving that link. No, no. In OPP, no, no. you will find. You will find the documentation. It is not here. I think. Okay, I will share this link. Ah uh, yes, Abhishek. Yes, ma'am. Now I have one doubt uh, from which you are. Can I ask you? For why you are not audible? Uh, I have one doubt from week two and uh, maybe from week three. Can I week ask? Week two and week three. Yeah, ask. Uh, week two or week three? That part, ma'am, where uh, professor was discussing about that. Uh, Uh, but ma'am, uh, you were in the in between, and somebody inter interrupted, and Miss we couldn't complete this process. Okay, okay, sorry, sir. After that. Hmm. Just a minute. I will explain this how to use. Okay, so uh, here you have this class arrays. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now what you can see is different methods that are defined in this class. and the description 
here you have the description method and the description here okay so there are so many methods defined in the array class mm -hmm. then uh, the specifically if you want to go through the static methods then here it is then the concrete methods so this will give you the summary of methods that are defined in the class array so object here if this is written as class extends object so object is what the super class for every class in the java <laughs> we will find this class arrays extend object also some other class extend object so this is what it means now okay this is clear right you are having the packages you can go through the interfaces classes and in those classes you can find out the uh, methods. different method which are defined in those class okay so mm -hmm. that is all i think uh, is there anything that that is left then you have exceptions as well so exceptions you have not uh, yet gone through okay ma'am uh, i'll try my miss by my own mm -hmm. and if I, i'll have any if doubt then find I'll, any other uh, difficulty please ask me okay yes yes ma'am yes ma'am okay thank you so much ma'am okay yeah please ask what doubt you have week to hello ma'am mm -hmm. uh, hello ma'am uh, in one lecture uh, professor was telling something about date start and fusion and uh, their relationship between like uh, subtype and uh, okay uh, inheritance then uh, subtype and inheritance mm -hmm. so like uh, date is a subtype of q and star but uh, it's the opposite like uh, q and star is in uh, inherited from date that part can you please not clarify uh, actually ma'am uh, i think uh, if we inherit take uh, from q i think ma'am we also can do that why it is the opposite way you are asking about uh, this q and stack right subtyping uh, subtyping and inheritance problem mostly i understand the inheritance uh, sorry uh, subtyping that uh, q from q and stack dec uh, is a subtype but uh, why it is the other way around that uh, we are inheriting from dec uh, from dec uh, q and stack okay just a minute Subtyping is in week three, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, is my screen visible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. The subtyping uh, is what? Suppose you have this uh, B. If B is a subtype of A, whenever we require an object of type A, we can use the object of type B, right? So what? Ha yeah. What is happening here? You have manager class okay so manager class is what it is a sub class of employee okay so you can say that manager is a what sub type of employee yes sir right yes so see if b is a sub type of a then whenever we require an object of type a so type a is what here 
employ okay b is sub type of a because b is the sub class of this a a class right so whenever we are creating the object of this a class we can use the object of type b is it clear yes. but yes. if you are using if you are saying that manager e and equals to new employee that is not legal okay yes that part that is clear is what, one that is yes. what meant by sub type Uh, can you you are asking about Q and stack, right? Q and yes, stack, no? Q and stack is what? It is part of DQ. If I am not wrong, it is part of DQ. Okay. Uh, no, ma'am, it's a separate. Uh, it's a... Hello? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, this one, I think, ma'am, it, it, it's a separate concept from DSA, data structure. No, no. Uh, you are typing about sub subtyping, right? Asking about subtyping, yes. no? Yes, yes. Subtyping and init. Ma'am, uh, can you please come a little bit uh, down uh, for the question, like? Which one? Uh, Ma'am, uh, there are some somewhere it will be written like uh, date and span in this uh, slide. Ma'am, down, ma'am, down. Where is it? Q and stack only you are asking me, no? Yes, ma'am. On that part, like. Also, another push. Okay, wait. I need to go through the lecture slides. Where is it? Stack and Q. Like uh, Q is having two interface, uh, two uh, methods. Like uh, Q is having the front. Uh, Can you type your question in chat box? Ma'am, uh, can you please go? I think I lost your voice. Ma'am, uh, graded assignment uh, week three, ma'am. Question number six. Graded assignment question number six. Yes, for week three. Okay. It is the same problem like uh, you stack and day. Okay, wait. Are you asking about this? Just let me share the screen. Is this your question? DQ and Q stack? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma that is what I was explaining. Okay, now you can see. DQ here is actually a uh, see the hierarchy is like this. You have DQ, then you have Q stack. Okay, that is why it is written DQ has more functionality than Q or stack. So DQ is a subtype of both these types. Okay, see we have seen about the employee. And the manager class. We have seen employee E, and we are creating using the manager class. Right? right. So, here what we can say is employee is a subtype of manager. Employee is a subtype of manager because we can create the object of this employee class by using the manager class which is a subclass 
okay so that is what that is what here it is written dq is a subtype of both these types because you can create you can create the object of dq by using the q class or by using the stack class okay so dq is the subtype of both of these classes is it clear yes, yes ma'am okay this so, part is clear ma'am hmm. but for the inheritance part. for the inheritance inheritance we have can suppress two functions in a dq and use it as a q or stack so both q and stack inherit from the dq this is clear right you are having this as a super class q and stack are the sub classes here okay you are inheriting the properties of dq to q and stack classes okay now what you can do is since you are inheriting the properties of dq to q and stack dq is now become what the super class right for the q and stack so dq can can be said as a sub type both for both of these classes why sub type because you can create the object of dq by using the q and stack classes is it clear sub type sub type and sub class both are both are different things okay sub type and sub class are both are different things sub type why why you are calling it sub type because you can create the object of that class by using the other type of class right so it has become the sub type correct and likewise you are creating class. hmm yeah hello yes ma'am what about sub class ma'am sub classes is what you are inheriting the properties from the super class okay so see here you have dq as a super class dq is a your super class you are inheriting here you are inheriting the uh, functionalities of this dq class to q and stack now these both of these are called as sub classes okay why because you are inheriting the properties of this dq class but what about the object creation object creation is a different thing what you can do is you can use the super class here and you can mention the sub class here and you can create the object so now you can say that dq is a sub type dq is a sub type because it can create the object by using its sub classes okay here ma'am uh, dp is a sub type uh, or q is a sub type for no, like uh, employee e equal to new uh, manager so employee was the uh, manager was the sub type right no 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 uh, did i say manager is sub type manager is the sub type of employee no 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 since you are like, creating employee object by using the manager class right so this is now this is a sub class but this is a sub type that is why it is written here see dq has more functionality dq is a sub type of both of these types q and stack type you can use the q and stack type to create the object of dq which is which is now has become sub type are you able to get this okay see what i am trying to say is suppose you have let's forget about dq and q and stack suppose you have this simple a class okay now a a is a class which b is extending okay now class b if i write class b extends a then i say class c extends a 
okay yes. so this is what i meant by inheriting right i am inheriting the yes. properties of a to b and similarly to c but yes. now what i can do i can create the object of class a by using b or i can create object of class a by using c class okay yes. but if you write something b new a this is not possible this will be illegal it will give you error but this is legal this is possible because you are creating object of super class by using the sub class okay now this concept is clear right you are using the sub class by using the uh, creating the object of the super class by using the sub class this is clear yes ma'am now see this b and c b and c is a type right let's say it is a individual type okay b and c are the individual type okay and a will become the sub type of them b and c are the individual type and a will become the sub type these are the types and a and a has become sub type why sub type because you are creating the object of a by using b and c classes are you getting this yes something you defined from the uh, something you defined from the individual things become the sub type right yes Ma'am, sub type is means super class. Is is it? Is this? I couldn't get ma'am. Miss the up to the miss uh, class creation, I got it. But from B and C type, I couldn't get it. See, it is a simple thing. See, if I am saying I have a individual B and C classes, okay, but they are also the sub classes, sub classes of A. Yes. but you are defining a by using b and c yes ma'am suppose you, you there is parent 1 and parent 2 okay or let's say there is a parent 1 parent from parent 1 you have child 1 and child 2 Okay, so properties from parent one is inheriting to child one and child two. Now mm -hmm. what I can say, child one and child two are individual now. Suppose they are not child anymore; they are adults. Okay, so now adult one and adult two can be. used to define parent one right yes ma'am is it so they are having the individual functionality now so now their functionality can be used to identify the parent are you getting this so uh, right. we are identifying it by creating an object of the super class using the sub classes that what you are saying yes yes okay you are identifying here the super class now suppose your child has become adult now you will be identified by your child Ch your child is an individual personality now and you will be identified by his or her behavior so now this is the same thing we are have they are happening this is the types now and this has become the sub type are you able to understand Oh. Yes, hello. Are all subtype subclasses? Subtype subclasses? No, are all subtype subclasses or vice versa? No, no. Here see here super classes are subtype, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you please uh, define 
पेरेंट क्लास हियर एंड you are defining two of the class sub, uh, child classes by using the parent class right you are inheriting the properties here by using what extend keyword now suppose yes. your child 1 and child 2 have the individual functionality characteristics yeah now this has become as a type individual type you can say so you are using those sub classes to define the parent class here okay now what i am doing is i am creating parent object by using child 1 or i can create it by using child 2 so what you can say since these are types you can say this is sub type second thing what will happen if interface can comes you into picture can you repeat the last thing again once the parent p yeah. uh, parent p is oh. equal to new child so you are using the super class object of super class mm -hmm. and giving it the characteristics of the sub class yes okay so now the super class has become a sub type yes you can say okay. this is a sub type of both of these classes both of of these B and child C. classes yes child 1 and child 2 so okay. in this example it will be a will be the sub type of b and c what if okay. interface is there interface Yeah, if interface is there, then how these subtype and subclasses relation will change? So, uh, we have seen it? interfaces that it cannot be instantiated, right? Yeah. So, if A is an interface, again you will be uh, using the class here which have implemented the interface. So, since suppose B implements A, then you can instantiate the uh, A class. by using b class okay. is it clear so this sub type uh, see, see the sub type is nothing which we have discussed today like abstract classes and interfaces couldn't create its own object right they should depend on their uh, child classes to create the object correct so this sub type is used here only you are creating the object by using your child class is means interface clear? is also a sub type yes interface is a sub type is it clear sub class and sub type uh, yes ma'am so here in this example also you dq dq is a super class okay and you are uh, q and stack are inheriting the properties of the dq so this is super class these both are the sub classes so you can create q and stack you can use them and create the object of q so these are the types now and you can say dq is a sub type of both of these q and stack so we will create object of dq right using q and stack yes okay okay how d how this can be q can be a subclass because uh, sub uh, the subclass should have properties uh, at least of the parent class and more here dq has four properties and uh, q has only two properties 
so not all properties close. that should be not all properties should be uh, inherited okay. yes it is there so uh, this is this is having insert front and uh, delete front which is part of this uh, okay so this is dq is having insert front and delete front which is also part of the stack then you have insert rear and delete rear which is also part of the queue okay so, so dq, DQ is, is a subclass some personalities dq is having some uh, functionalities which is inherited to queue and stack it is not necessary that you are inheriting everything uh, ma'am i have the doubt that uh, uh, can we not uh, like uh, can we able to create dq deck uh, from uh, queue ma'am like uh, let's say suppose uh, we have a definition for uh, uh, queue ma'am mm -hmm. then uh, when uh, uh, we are extending deck uh, deck extends uh, queue uh, so at that time ma'am in the deck definition uh, like in the deck plus definition can we uh, put uh, those other two uh, interfaces uh, into it ma'am so that uh, it behaves like the same so can you get uh, my point ma'am no uh, you want to create dq object by using q q okay yes then I want to create a deck uh, a class using ex uh, uh, using uh, queue map, like uh, class deck extends queue. So class queue deck. has that two two property uh, two uh, methods. Extends uh, so queue. In, yes, ma'am. This is not possible. Ma'am, this is not last, possible. Uh, simply, ma'am. Class uh, queue is can be extending DQ. Uh, see ma'am, see in in Q ma'am, there are like insert rear and uh, delete front. Two methods mm. are there, mm. but uh, in the deck definition, I will add another two methods, like uh, insert uh, front and uh, uh, delete rear ma'am. But see, that these are all. That two methods I will include. Then uh, are, it will be cool, not user defined classes. Okay. These are the classes which is already present in uh, Java. Okay, so DQ is already having the properties which DQ is your superclass. See, here also I have mentioned object will be the superclass, and every class in Java will be inheriting the properties from the object class. Okay, so similarly, DQ is your superclass here, and Q and stack will be inheriting the properties from the DQ. So this is not possible. This is not possible. Okay. Okay. I hope this is clear now. Subtyping and inheritance. Ma'am, uh, ma this is clear. But last, last out. Mm -hmm. uh, Ma'am, means is it possible for the superclass to have more functionality than the subclasses superclass yes it can have more functionality than subclasses because uh, miss, as per my understanding what i understood that the uh, the class miss from which we extend miss subclass which will have more properties than the parent class or at least equal to yes take the case yes. of employee yes. and manager manager has more properties and it is a subclass employee has less properties hmm. similarly deck has more properties it should be a subclass Superclass will be having the more proper classes will have the properties only which are uh, mentioned in the uh, superclass. No, I am afraid. No, no, no. For example, he is using in that the subclass has more properties than the superclass, the one with the manager and employee. Subclass having the more properties than superclass. Yes. In the manager and employee example, okay. The subclass has more properties than superclass. But shouldn't the superclass have more properties? Subclasses, I okay, wait. 
I think subclasses will be inheriting few of the properties from the super class. So it could also if, have no ma'am. If, if this will be the case, okay, if, if this will be the case, then uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Please continue. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, if this will be the case, if a subclass will inherit some some of the properties, then how we can create object of parent class from the child class? Ch since hmm. since child class is having more yes. more functionality or at least equal to functionality, then then that's why we are able to create the uh, object of parent class from the child class. Okay, so uh, yes, so the by default uh, it should come by default every every method uh, should come inherent to it. So I'm mentioning the same thing only, right? Since DQ is having the four properties there. And when Q is inheriting DQ, it is uh, inheriting only two properties. Correct? Not all the properties. Right? No, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, perhaps I am not able to convey my message. Is there anyone who is able to who has understood my doubt and able to can create means convey the message? Yeah, asking the, the same thing, right? Uh, which I am interpreting. No. Uh, no, ma'am. Means mm -hmm. as per means, uh, my understanding, child class is having properties either equal to or at least uh, means either more than um, the parent class or at least equal to, and okay. that's why we are able to create uh, object of parent class from the child class. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are asking me that child class should have the more properties then the parent class because we are creating the object of parent class by using the child class yes is it wrong? yes okay but uh, that is not the case i think because since you are having this uh, see in this example dq you are having four properties which out of which you are two you are inheriting right so you are using that uh, child class to uh, create the object of DQ. You are using Q as a child class and creating the object of DQ because some of the functionalities of DQ is inherited to uh, Q class. Correct? So I think that should be the case. I don't think but the child we class never, should be having but but mm -hmm. when we extend something, we never write extends these properties. We always yeah, write yeah, class, mm -hmm. we extend this class. So, and by default, if something is extending, so all the properties are inherited. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, in that case, Q should be having all the properties. Okay, yes, I think. I will check yes, one about this. In the lecture also, ma'am, uh, professor uh, uh, tells that somehow, somehow we are doing like suppressing two of the methods, and uh, we are we are inheriting in the queue at mm -hmm. Okay, I will check this once. Okay. Uh, what is the case in DQ and Q and stack? Uh, in any case, we can say that subtype is associated with the subclass. Subtype is not associated with the subclass. Both are different. Sorry, with the superclass because we make the object of the superclass. Yeah. Class. yeah, yeah. You can say okay. that. Okay. Okay, I will check once about this. Uh, if the properties are getting, all the properties are getting inherited or not. Since no, okay. uh, yes, you, when we are mentioning extend, yeah. Hmm. So yeah, all the properties only get inherited, right? Um, yeah. If we yeah. are, if we have, we are not mentioning. Uh, someone mentioned it correctly. If we are not mentioning anything specifically, then it is understood, right? We are inheriting yeah. every property. But why in uh, this DQ and Q, we have only two of the methods? I will check this once. Okay. Uh, same thing, same thing, mom. Uh, for graded assignment uh, three, uh, question number six. Uh, 
graded yeah, assignment. Same thing happens there. Question number three. Hello. A graded assignment uh, for week three. Now question number six. Question number six. Yes. Okay. Okay, I will check it. Okay. okay. Question number six. You have this question, right? Scanner, printer, copier. Yes. The scanner with method scan documents, printer with method print documents, and copier with method scan documents and print documents. So here the copier is a subtype of scanner and printer, right? Scanner and printer both inherit from copier. This is correct only, right? But you are saying me that if you extend, uh, since a scanner extend copier, it should have both, right? Scan documents and print documents. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, I will check this once. But as per my understanding, uh, this. Uh, Okay, if uh, you are mentioning it, okay, I, I will check it. I will check. It. I will mention uh, mention this thing about in uh, Saturday session. Okay. Okay then. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am.